news comes first. The family of a man shot and killed by Minnesota police wants more serious charges. Officer Kim Potter, who has since resigned from Brooklyn Center Police, is charged with second-degree manslaughter. The department says she killed Dante Wright when she accidentally fired a gun rather than a taser. Overnight, hundreds of protesters continued to fill the streets in front of the police office. They started to thin out by curfew, but at times threw things like water bottles at police. Organizers have echoed the family's calls for more severe charges against Potter. Just a few miles away, the trial of former Minneapolis police officer is wrapping up. Closing arguments are set for Monday in Derek Chauvin's murder trial. The defense rested its case yesterday when Chauvin said he would not testify. He is accused of murder and manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. The jury is set to start deliberating next week over whether or not he is guilty. Meanwhile, the city is preparing for once jurors reach the verdict, you can see crews putting in razor wire around the police building in downtown Minneapolis. Officials say there will be extra security at all five boundaries out of, a, out of the, an, an abundance of caution for possible protest. Peaceful protests took the streets in Chicago after police re released body cam video of an officer shooting and killing a 13-year-old. Adam Toledo was killed on March 29th. The video, which we are not showing due to the graphic nature, shows the boy with his empty hands up when Officer Eric Stillman shot him in the chest. New surveillance footage shows a wider view, appearing to show Toledo toss a gun behind a wooden fence before turning around to put his hands up. The officer shot him less than one second later. Even though Chicago officials braced for civil unrest, that was not the case overnight. Small crowds gathered to march in the city. Demonstrators called against police brutality. One activist saying, quote, we have to protect our children all over this city. No plans have been made to resume, modify, or stop the wall construction at the U.S.-Mexico border. Court documents show the Biden administration is still working out what to do with the project. In a court filing, the Justice Department told the U.S. District Court the executive branch is continuing to work on a developing plan. The filing is part of an ongoing case challenging former President Donald Trump's national emergency declaration. Trump's emergency order allowed his administration to use government funding for border wall construction. When Biden was sworn in, he ordered a pause on all border wall construction plans. No timeline has been given for a decision on whether or not to continue with the wall. President Joe Biden is moving to speed up refugee admissions to the U.S. The president signed an emergency determination today, but he did not lift former President Donald Trump's low cap of 15,000 refugees for this year. Instead, Biden is adjusting the allocation limits set by Trump, which officials said have been the driving factor in reducing refugee admissions this year. The new allocations provide more slots for refugees from Africa, the Middle East, and Central America. Search efforts are set to pick up back in the Gulf of Mexico this morning, as 12 people remain missing after a boat capsized Tuesday afternoon. During calm seas yesterday, Coast Guard divers searched around the oil industry ship. Authorities say the divers got no response when knocking on the hull of the vessel. Rescuers aren't sure if the crew might be stuck inside the boat. The vessel was flipped during rough seas and hurricane force winds on Tuesday. So far, six people have been rescued and one body has been recovered. Turning back to the vaccines, researchers at Stanford Medicine and Cincinnati Children's Hospital say they've started testing for the Pfizer vaccine on kids as young as two. Stanford says it's one of five sites across the U.S. taking part in the clinical trials. A spokesman says researchers started giving doses to kids between two and five years old Wednesday. Meanwhile, Cincinnati Children's Hospital said the first dose has given, been given to participants last week. Combined, both facilities have just under 500 kids getting the vaccine, and more are expected to be enrolled soon. If you got the Pfizer vaccine, you will likely need a third dose within a year. That's according to the drug maker's CEO. 
He says everyone will likely need a booster after 6 to 12 months. And from there, it will be an annual reevaluation. Officials are still testing the timing of follow-up vaccine doses. We're tracking more rain moving back into mid-Missouri. I'm tracking, though, coming up after the break, whether or not some of these weekend plans are going to be going up in smoke. Stay with us.